Hi guys, I'm going to do a quick video review today on the Ethan I Was Before by Ali Standish. This was an absolute cracker. It's a book that I picked up um, a couple of months ago actually. I was in Waterstones, just local Waterstones, and um, essentially it was um, there was a multi buy deal, so it was uh, three books for the price of two. I um, I managed to find five books that I liked, and I was looking for a sixth, and nothing obvious was jumping out at me when I saw this. And um, yeah, the blurb caught the um, caught my eye a little bit. It's um, it's a book written by an American author, um, as I say, Ali Standish. Perhaps that's um, why it isn't a book that's so well known over here or so widely shared on my sort of Twitter network. But it was really awesome. My wife actually read it first earlier in the week and she said, you know, she's read loads of books, uh, very similar um, sort of genres to what I've been reading. But she said this really stood out. So um, I was keen to read it after her. It didn't disappoint. It focuses around one main character called Ethan. Now, we learn very early on in the book that there has been a terrible incident in um, in Ethan's life. Ethan is a young boy, he's a 13 year old boy. He has had a um, he's had a situation where his best friend, a girl called Casey, has had an accident. Now Ethan feels extremely responsible for this accident and um, blames himself greatly for it. Essentially what we learn is a dare has gone wrong and Casey has Casey has become seriously injured in this accident, actually to the point where she's in a sort of um, non-responsive state. Um, Ethan has undergone treatment, he's tried to run away from home three three times to try and visit Casey in her, um, her sort of palliative care nursing home, but his parents are extremely worried and they've decided to relocate the family to, um, to Georgia to live with um, Ethan's grandfather. Now, when Ethan arrives in Georgia, he's the new kid at the school. He um, he stands out and seems a bit different. And he's befriended by a young girl called Coralie. Now, Coralie herself is a bit different. She is somebody who um, who is maybe not the most popular. She seems like quite a cool kid, but uh, she's a bit different in a way that um, the other children at school don't seem to get her. Ethan and Coralie strike up a really good friendship and... It seems to be whilst she isn't um, exactly the same as Casey, Ethan's friend who um, who he doesn't have in his life anymore, there's certainly gaps that Coralie can fill there. Now, um, they learn a little bit more about each other. They both have fairly complex backstories. But what happens is um, is quite an adventure, quite an exciting um sort of sequence of events. Essentially Ethan and Coralie see an abandoned house um, on the way home from school one day and decide to decide to peer in, decide to see what's going on. When they get to the house um, they find a coat, uh, like a new looking coat, which is weird because the house hasn't been hasn't been used for a very long time. They rummage through the pockets and find a red velvet box and before they have time to pop that back in the coat pocket they see a figure at the top of the stairs, so they make a run for it. Now, since this happened, there have been various things that have gone wrong. Coralie sees this figure appear at her window. Other other situations are evolving, and it feels like they're being followed. It feels like their life isn't quite how it was before. Now, I won't spoil the story. I won't give too much more away, but it is very, very exciting. There's some revelations that, that come from who that figure is. There's... Um, a little bit more we find out about Casey and what has happened there and it is a really 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 good book it is a book that I found myself um, paging like page turning rapidly to I think I read about 250 pages yesterday in the space of uh, I don't know a couple of hours I really liked it and it's one that I've been um, encouraging people to, to read a little bit more when I've um, you know, since I finished it, I've been posting a few pictures on Twitter and encouraging others to read. I think it's a book that, you know, if you do read, you certainly won't be disappointed. It might be one that, it might be one that you um, haven't seen before or isn't, you know, an obvious um, book in the bookshops you visit. 
but it is awesome. I think it's up there for me and you know amongst the books that I've read recently as one of the very best and one of the books I've enjoyed the most. Um, what struck me about this book, and I posted this on Twitter actually um, after finishing it, and I'll give me a second just to have a quick look, is um, they popped some guided reading type questions in the back of the book, which I thought was really interesting. Um, just to sort of prompt the reader on um, on the book, maybe give parents a few discussion points that they could speak to their children about just to question them a bit more specifically about what they've read. And I know having spoken to parents before at parents' evening, they, you know, they're always keen to find out how they can help their children with reading, so maybe that's something that, um, that other authors might consider. I'm moving on next to The Jamie Drake Equation. That's another Christopher Edge book. I really enjoyed his... Um, his book, The Infinite Night Lives of Maisie Day, recently, and um, started this about an hour ago. I'm 60 pages in, so it's, it's a very easy read, but one I'm really, really enjoying. Um, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. As always, please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and um, hit subscribe if um, you're a regular on YouTube. Thanks, guys.